Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah. Happy Tuesday. It is election day. Finally, it's here. The the day that, you know, we we've been talking about, we've been thinking about, we've been oh my goodness, it's been it's been a long, you know, election years are always interesting because of all the ads and all the rhetoric and all the debates and everything. And this year is no different, except that it is different because it's 2020 and everything is different. So I hope that um, I hope you voted uh, regardless of what what party you belong to or who your candidate is. I hope you voted because making your voice heard is extremely important every election year and um, especially this year when things have been a little crazy during 2020. So happy election day. I know it is a stressful day for many people as we wait to find out what will happen next in our country in terms of leadership. So maybe it's appropriate that this author interview landed on today because today I am interviewing author Richard V. Battle and his book is called Conquering Life's Course, Common Sense in Chaotic Times. Um, Common sense in chaotic times seems very appropriate right now, I think. I'm I think we could all use some common sense. I think we can all acknowledge that it has been pretty chaotic the last nine months or so. And um, let me give you the description of the book. It says, uh, does today's world frustrate you? Do you wonder if common sense is vanishing? Conquering Life's Course is a collection of time-proven principles communicated with bite-sized stories and humorous anecdotes. It will make the reader think, laugh, and be inspired to realize a more fulfilling life. If you or a loved one have given up on understanding the world today, Conquering Life's Course is a must-read. It offers reassurance to the reader that age-old traditions and wisdom still rule over unproven theory. The book is concise, easy to read, and offers invaluable insights that can be shared with the whole family. It also includes motivational quotes. That is, again, the description of Conquering Life's Course, Common Sense in Chaotic Times by Richard V. Battle. And it that pretty much sums up the book. It is, um, it, it's categorized under motivational and inspirational. Each chapter is, oh, maybe three, four, five pages long. So if you are looking for um, some, some bite-sized inspiration in your day, then, you know, you can sit down and read just a uh, a chapter or two, maybe while you're having your morning coffee or eating breakfast or on your lunch break, whatever it is that you're looking for, this this might be um, an option for you. This particular book, uh, Richard has written multiple books. This particular book includes a lot of anecdotes and stories and advice that he has given to his daughter Elizabeth throughout her life. And so there are some very sweet stories about his family and his daughter Elizabeth, who is now, I think he said she's 21, but uh, he'll say that in the interview. So I could be, I, I could need to be corrected on that. And, you know, sometimes we just need a little snippet of, uh, of advice and maybe that's something that you're looking for. So you might want to check this book out, but I'm going to let Richard tell you more about it so he can tell you why he wanted to write it, why, uh, writing about lessons that he has taught his daughter was important to him to include in this book, etc. So let's go ahead and turn now to the interview. Once again, the book is called Conquering Life's Course. Common Sense in Chaotic Times, and the author is Richard V. Battle. Hello, Richard. Welcome to the podcast. 
Good afternoon, Sarah. We appreciate so much the opportunity to join you and your audience today. Well, I'm very happy to have you here, and um, we're going to talk about your newest book called Conquering Life's Course, Common Sense in Chaotic Times. Before we get to the book, though, um, if you could just share a bit about yourself, that would be wonderful. Yes, I'd be happy to. I'm a, I'll call it a recovering corporate executive. I hate to use the word retired, but I wrote uh, other books during my corporate career. I was in the technology industry with disruptive technology for many, many years. But while I was doing that, I would be a public speaker and trainer and wrote other books as well. And I do that currently full time. And everything I do is aimed to try to provide timeless messages of proven principles to help people win in their lives every day. Thank you for that. And so, um, as I said, this isn't your first book. You've written others, um, but this one is called Conquering Life's Course, and the subtitle is Common Sense in Chaotic Times. So can you give a bit of an overview about this book? Yes, and we published it uh, last October, actually pre-COVID, but it is uh, very timely for what we're going through. Uh, it is a book of 40 proven principles of life with 43 motivational quotes, and I have 140 examples of other people, places, and events, in addition to examples from my own personal life. And it's a book designed to try to help people reaffirm the values that they may have been brought up with so that they will have the confidence to try to share and pass those of values along to their children and grandchildren as well because the values that most of us were brought up with are the ones that built the greatest country in the history of the world, and they are threatened uh, by many people in political and non-political avenues as well. So what was your initial inspiration to write the book? Well, this book has it, – it's kind of interesting because part of it was written as blogs uh, a few years back when my daughter was younger. And then when I left the corporate world and I'd written two other books, I took those particular blogs and saw the need to try to share these principles, and I added several other uh, pieces to it as well to produce this particular book. And I might add that the 40 principles, each chapter is 500 to 1,200 words long. Uh, the book can be read in any sequence. There's no there's not a start and finish, so if an audience member reads one chapter, they can pick the first one or the last one or anyone in between that looks appealing uh, because each one stands on their own. Yeah, they do, and they are not long chapters. So, you know, this is something that you could sit down with your morning coffee or while you're, you know, eating breakfast before work and just read a chapter and, and kind of start your day with um, with some inspiration maybe. Yes, that's exactly right, and, and I might digress and, and add that when I wrote the earlier chapters when my daughter was younger, it was trying to provide some background for her since I was a little older when she was born in case uh, I wouldn't be able to teach her those lessons in life, uh, as well as uh, potentially for her children in the future. If I'm not here to be a grandfather for her children, then I wanted to have something of the beliefs and the philosophies that could be shared to help her life. Uh, and I think that they can provide the same thing to other people as well. And speaking of your daughter, she is featured um, quite a lot in the book. I, I, I like that you share the stories of her. Um, it's also dedicated to her. So um, you, you've, you've talked about this a little bit, but talk about first writing the blogs and then writing the book with her and possibly future generations in mind? Well, it, it's interesting from the standpoint, one of the first chapters I wrote uh, that was in the blog was when she was four or five years old and the chapter's Life's Not Fair. And she and three or four of her friends were playing one day when I came home from work and all of a sudden they broke out into an argument and started saying, that's not fair. And I wanted to teach her the lesson about life's not fair. 
And so I sat her down after her friends left and and asked her different questions. Is it is it fair that your friends have things you don't have? And she'd say no. And I say, is it fair you have things they don't have? No. Is it fair your your older brother didn't live to see his first first birthday? No. So I finally got the light bulb to go off where she could see that life was not fair. And then after that, when she would have something happen and she'd say, that's not fair. And I'd say, Elizabeth, what do we say about life? And she would acknowledge life's not fair. And she realized that early in life. And now she that's inherent in her belief system that life's not fair. It doesn't matter who's running the government. Uh, who our relatives are, how much money we have, life is not always fair, and it never will be. Uh, unfortunately, true, yeah. Um, and we, some people don't ever quite internalize that concept. How <laughs> old is Elizabeth now? She's 21 and a senior in college. And nice. she has not read this volume yet, but I know she will later and again it will give her a better background of things beyond even things she and I've talked about and uh, I'll give you another example about her that was so good uh, we had a book signing at Barnes and Noble when she was about six and her job after I gave the talk and was signing books was to open the books to the page where I would sign and there were several people that I knew there and who knew her, and she tugged on my coat and asked me, she said, Daddy, am I supposed to sign the books? And I said, well, if somebody asks you to, yes, you are. And after that, she was asked to sign nearly every book that I was asked to sign. And I put that into a chapter called Priceless because to me that was a priceless event. I could not have paid for that but what it did to expand her imagination about the things that she might be able to do in life was priceless in my mind. And we all have opportunities like that with our children, grandchildren, nieces, uh, anybody that we're with to have those priceless type moments that you can't buy. Yeah, I actually really liked that particular story because I, I could just – uh, obviously not picture her since I don't know what six what she looks like or six year old her looks like, but I could just picture the the eagerness <laughs> on her face and then to be asked to sign a book must have been really exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was, and uh, we do. We'll talk about the website. I do have a picture of that on the website, I believe, <laughs> of her signing. Oh, good. So I'm going to jump in here so we can take our first break of the podcast, but you now have a bit more of an idea of what this book is about and what Richard is trying to accomplish with this book. When we come back, he will be talking more about what he hopes that readers will be able to take away from the book when they read it. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Golden State Media Concepts bring you the Bible Study Podcast. Reflect and journey the Bible as together we study God's Word and be inspired. Bible study made fun and informative for all ages. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Bible Study Podcast. Review podcast. I am speaking today with author Richard V. Battle about his new book, Conquering Life's Course Common Sense in Chaotic Times. Let's go ahead and return to that interview. What do you hope that readers will take away from the book? Well, we're, our common sense values are under assault from all quarters right now, and especially in this COVID year. And I want people to first realize that the values of common sense are always in style and they never go out of season, and not to allow the assaults on them to deter people from using the common sense values 
that, again, made the country so great for so long. And I think that's the main thing. And if people have that increased confidence, they will be able to share that, with, again, with their kids and grandkids and help extend that to future generations. And it's not a stuffy book. There's a lot of uh, good stories and examples. There's humor, self-deprecating humor to try to illustrate uh, the particular points that we're making in the book. And, you know, you have mentioned COVID uh, with the way books are written. Obviously, this this wasn't written during the pandemic. It would have been written before, but it seems very timely to have come out during um, or to be out during this particular year. What, um, how do you think the book is then relevant in this particular year uh, beyond what you've, you've said already? Well, one of the chapters I wrote, uh, because people are grieving this year because there's a lack of control, there's uncertainty, there's fear, there's all these emotions going on that are atypical this year. And one of the chapters that I, I really like is entitled, The Greatest Gift We Can Give Anyone. And in my opinion, we can always give people the gift of encouragement. And there's so many negative things going on right now, but the word of encouragement is always there and will uplift people and give them hope for the future and hope for themselves to do better going forward than they may be at right now. And Jim Kelly, the Hall of Fame football player who survived multiple bouts with cancer, uh, and I'm going to paraphrase his quote, but he basically said, you never know when that one word of encouragement at the right moment may help somebody see the next day. And, it, and it's so critical. And so in these tough times, if we are consciously trying to lift and encourage people, uh, that's a terrific gift to give. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's, it's very easy to think about just the negative. And you have a great example in the book, just a really simple thing where you – you came in and your daughter and her mom were eating popcorn and they were eating it very dainty and not making a mess. And you grabbed a handful and popped it in your mouth. And then Elizabeth, whose hands are obviously much smaller than dad's tried to do the same thing. And so, yeah, I, I just, it's a very simple explanation, kind of a silly, a, a silly example, but really shows how people are watching us and are watching our reactions and, we might not know it, but we can make a difference with how we react to certain situations. Well, well that's a, gr a great story, and, and the title of that chapter was Every Act is an Example to Someone. And we're examples to people regardless of whether we want to or not. We're examples regardless of how young or old we are. When Elizabeth was just two, the four- and five-year-old kids were examples to her in addition. But it really was humorous to me that day because when I came home, I gave her a negative example about how to eat popcorn. And we see athletes and movie stars, and this year of COVID, we see people in the media, they're, they're going naked and stripping and doing all kinds of things to gather attention just so people will look at them now. But we need to be thinking more about our examples and their long-term impacts on people as well. And I think that athletes especially will say, don't look at me as an example. I want to live the way I want to live. Well, it does, they don't get a choice. We're all examples, whether we want to be or not, as I said. And if we're going to be an example, hopefully we can be the best example possible for those we, we care about and everyone else. Yeah, I think that celebrities are interesting in that because, you know, they just maybe they just want to live their life how they would normally live their life and they don't want to be in the spotlight, but they are. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm grateful that my mostly every move is not televised or talked about on something like TMZ, but you know, I I think I would definitely be concerned about how I was an example if my life were that public. Yes, and, and what's interesting is they want the attention when they want it and the way they want it, but they don't want the attention the way they don't want it. And you can't have it both ways. Right, and right. It, 
get the attention, you're either going to be a good example or not. And when when I grew up, and maybe you also, my parents didn't have to worry about what was on television or what words were in songs. They could leave me with anything, and there was nothing that would really adversely affect me. And unfortunately, producers overcame that responsibility with the demand to have their First Amendment rights, and now parents have to be more vigilant in what they allow their kids to see or hear or read because of those people's rights. And it's uh, it's unfortunate, but it's the world we live in today. Yeah. Um, in terms of writing the book, was this book different from your other books um, in, in the writing process, or was it pretty similar? How was that for you? Well, this, this is my sixth book, and I have a seventh one that will be out next month. And four of the six books I write in a style where, again, they're short chapters with examples. People can read them in any sequence they want. They're all independent chapters. Two of the books are sequential because they tell stories of events in, in my life and experiences that I wanted to share. Uh, so this one, again, is very similar to the three of them, and it's – it's the style I like. I like being able to take ideas where people don't have to read 200 pages that get a lesson or an example or something to laugh at. They can get it in a short period of time, pick it up, read it on the way to work in the morning if they're on a train or a bus or with their coffee in the morning, as you said, get a little bit of something out of it, and then go to the next thing. And unfortunately, I, I think – that I mean, I think that's a good model, but I think that we we need shorter chapters anymore because our attention spans are so so short for a variety of reasons. So it, you know, it's smart to try to encapsulate those into into smaller chunks of content. Well, yes, and I also use the material for multiple purposes as well, and I I do some short videos with chapters where I put them on video versus having them printed, and I try to have the material to where I can present it in multiple formats without having to break it up, and this, this is very conducive for that as well. But you are correct about the attention span for all of us. Yeah. Um, you mentioned your next book coming out next month. Um, what is the title of that book? Well, this is interesting, and this was a – a positive result of the COVID situation we're in, and it's a follow-up to Conquering Life's course, and it's entitled Navigating Life's Journey. And it will be 40 additional common sense principles. I've got over 75 quotes and over 250 examples of people, places, and things in it. And it uses uh, traveling a, down a river as a navigation of different stages of life, and it furthers the same type principles of the Common Sense and our uh, Conquering Life's course book. When you sit down to write um, a chapter or a blog entry or, or whatever it is, where do your ideas generally come from? Do you start with a quote or do you start with a life experience? Does it vary? Well, it varies, and, and what's interesting is – I don't think of myself as a literary author. I'm just trying to communicate ideas. Uh, my, my style of leadership and business and other areas is very much a coaching style, so I'm trying to give people ways that they can look at something and think of an idea themselves to help their lives. And so I get, I get ideas in all kinds of different places. I get them when I'm driving down the road or I'm sleeping at night or in church or I'll hear, I'll see something on a movie or read something, and all of a sudden I'll have an idea that I can develop a, a chapter around. And it's, it amazes me because of, of how they come out sometimes and how random they seem to be, but then how I'm able to put a couple of things together that people tell me that they really like. 
Time for our second break of the podcast. I will say that uh, it, I'm terrible at remembering those kinds of ideas that pop into my head. You know, if I'm driving, I'm I'm always like, yes, I'm going to remember that. Mm, don't usually remember that. If I have a dream and I wake up, I have never written anything to ever, I've ever dreamt about down in the middle of the night. People do it and they say that sometimes it works and sometimes they can't read their own handwriting. But I've never, but I don't wake up well, so it's not, it's not my best, it's not my best time. At any rate, uh, Richard will be talking a little bit more about what he does when those ideas come to him and he can't necessarily write them down immediately, like if he's driving. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Book Review Podcast. I am speaking today with author Richard V. Battle. Before the break, he was talking about how ideas for different chapters or maybe blog posts come to him. And um, me being me, I always want to know, okay, so, you know, how do you then organize that? Do you actually remember the, the thoughts that pop into your head? Because what I need is something waterproof to write things down in the shower. Things are always popping into my head when, I, when I'm in the shower. I never remember them later. So <laughs> thankfully, Richard seems to have a better handle on how to um, take care of that so he actually remembers things later. Do you write those down immediately, or are you pretty good at remembering when they pop into your head? No, it, uh, what I'll do is if I'm driving or uh, in church or someplace else, I'll, I'll jot a note down. If I'm if I'm awakened from a, a sleep, I will write as much as I can think at the moment. And sometimes I'll get up and work for an hour or two and write a, a chapter. Uh, it depends when the inspiration hits. And I never could understand it uh, until I experienced it. But years ago, they made a movie about John Philip Sousa. And one of the things he said in that movie was that when he was on the ship going to Cuba, he was given the song, The Stars and Stripes Forever, in just a few minutes, and that he wrote down notes and that he only changed a couple of notes when the song was finished and how he was given that inspiration. And I, I've experienced that, and it's so humbling when it happens because the differences of, of different information that come to you. Uh, it's just a very humbling experience to me. I would imagine so, yeah. Um, so maybe this is a, a little too soon to ask since you have a book coming out next month, but are you working on anything right now? <laughs> that, and that's a great question. Uh, yes, and, and what I do, and this kind of goes to what I think you want to talk about inspiring uh, authors as well and when I get an idea I'll jot the idea down and then sometimes I'll I'll write them immediately and sometimes I'll go back later but I've been one for many years where I'll keep notes and thoughts and ideas uh, in files where I can go back and then put them together and that's something I would encourage anyone who's thinking about writing to do if you have ideas Put them down, even if it's just something you want to share with your family. Uh, if it's stories for your family, write them down so you can, so they'll be there and, and you won't lose them in the future. 
And you've you've written throughout your career, you said, you know, some more technical writing, but is this type of writing, inspirational kind of writing, something that you've always wanted to do, or did you come at that um, later in life? How did that work for you? Well, again, it's it's all geared toward trying to share ideas to help people from a coaching mindset. And the first book I published was 32 years ago, and I never dreamed I would publish one book, much less six going on seven. And just as a brief story, I had been very involved in a a volunteer organization and had some pretty great success for our team and individually. And after that, I had been given the opportunity to teach a statewide leadership course for presidents of that organization for six years. And it was a day and a half course. And so every year I taught the presidents of those organizations from the largest cities in Texas. And what I noticed after three or four years was that the people coming in had not learned any of the things I taught their predecessors. And so I decided that I needed to just try to put down the things I was sharing and teaching so that it would be more easily disseminated to other people and people that I was teaching in the class would not not have to teach it to other people only. And so the first book I wrote was the Volunteer Handbook, How to Organize and Manage a Successful Organization. And again, it was trying to just share ideas to help people accomplish more in this volunteer organization. You've covered this a little bit in uh, one of your previous answers, but do you have other advice for aspiring authors, especially in uh, this particular area of um, kind of inspirational writing, self-help, that that type of genre? Well, I think the first thing I'd say is it's, it's not as difficult as you think, and publishing the first book is the toughest one because when I say you, I didn't have the confidence about it when I did the first book. I don't think of myself as Shakespeare or William Faulkner or John Grisham or some author like that. And people can do more than they think they can. And if they put the information down and have a little bit of discipline, they can get through the process and get the first book done. Once they get the first book done, the second one's always easier. And the style that I have now, I have a formula that I use so that it's much easier for me to put the ideas together and assemble it than it was early on. And others would gain that same knowledge uh, in just getting over that first hump. Uh, So I just encourage people, put the ideas down, even if you're just sharing it with your family, Uh, even if you record it on audio or video, and and if you want it to be written, you can transcribe that. So I, I know people who don't like to write, but they like to tell stories. And so capturing the information is the most important thing. Thank you for that. When you take time to read um, for yourself, do you have favorite authors or genres that you turn to? Yes, I primarily read, I love nonfiction biographies and histories. Uh, I don't read as much fiction as I used to. Uh, I loved authors like Dan Jenkins because he was a a sports writer that had a lot of humor and wit with him. Uh, There's there's other authors that I I like, but biographies are in history. Stephen Ambrose, when he was with us, I loved all of his work. Uh, David McCullough writes some terrific stuff. H.W. Brands. There's some terrific people out there, but I love to learn about history, and I like to learn about other people's lives and what they learned and experienced and what can I gain out of that that can help my life. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I I also love Stephen Ambrose. You mentioned your website, and so uh, tell people where they can find the website as well as where they can possibly interact with you on social media. Well, my website is richardbattle.com. And I'm on Twitter and Facebook as well. They can find me under Richard V. Battle. And um, all of my works are available on Amazon and can be through any other bookstores as well. Uh, I'm a a speaker and an advisor for businesses. And 
would be happy to communicate with anyone and, and try to be of help to anyone possible because I see my work as a mission uh, much sore, much more so than just a financial enterprise. And so there are a lot of uh, non-financial rewards. I, I'd like to share one with you. Uh, when my gym first reopened after COVID, I was standing in line to check in. And a lady in front of me who I've recognized from church, but I did not know her name, she turned around and said to me, thank you for your book. And before I could ask her which one, she said, your book, Surviving Grief by God's Grace About the Loss of Your Son. And I, I said, thank you very much. Well, that book was published in 2002, so it's 18 years old now. And I don't know when she read it, but to me, her words of encouragement to me made the effort worthwhile. It made my son's life more impactful, but it also gave me more impetus to try to do things to share with other people. That, that's amazing. I mean, that's very, that's very cool that um, you had that experience. Okay, book friends, it is time for our last break of the podcast. When we come back, we'll be wrapping things up with Richard. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Still on the search of that one true love? On the limbo in this crazy world of dating, marriage, relationships. Well, listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Relationship Podcast. Your one-stop podcast for everything about relationships. SMC Book Review Podcast and the conclusion of my interview with author Richard V. Battle. Let's go ahead and return now to that interview. So, Richard, we've talked about a variety of things so far this morning. Um, well, afternoon for no, it's, it's afternoon for both of us. Never mind. Um, <laughs> is there anything though that we haven't covered that you want to bring up in terms of writing, in terms of your books? Um, Anything at all that you haven't mentioned that you would like to mention at this point? Well, let me share a story that inspired me, and I hope will inspire others, whether they write or do something else. Uh, There's a tendency in our world to think when people reach an age of 50 or 60 or older that their life's over, and they're just relaxing and waiting for everything to finish. And when my daughter was about seven, we were looking for family-friendly television for her, and I had never seen Little House on the Prairie, but uh, I I said, well, let's watch that. And Laura Ingalls Wilder, who was a little girl on the show, I, I started looking up information about her, and lo and behold, she was a year older than my great grandmother, who lived until I was nine years old, and I had a relationship with her. And so when I watched Little House on the Prairie with my daughter, I envisioned my great-grandmother as a little girl. And I thought, well, Laura wrote her books and everything as diaries as she was growing up. Well, I learned later, and you may know this, but she did not write her first book until she was 65. She wrote her ninth and last book when she was 76. She died when she was 90 years old in 1957. And Little House on the Prairie didn't come on for 17 years after she died. And so there was no way she could even envision her books becoming a television show. And I only mention that from the standpoint that is, it should be inspirational to all of us that we never know what things we may do today and in whatever avenue of life that may help someone beyond our lifetimes. So it's never too late to do something that may help somebody else. And that should give us all purpose to try to do more while we're here. 
Yeah, and there's you know there's there's other stories that are li- that are similar. I mean, I I love the Little House books growing up. I've read them I don't even know how many times, and so I was fascinated with all things Laura Ingalls Wilder and um, did did reading on her as well. But she, you know, you hear other stories. You hear stories of people going back to college at 70, 80, whatever. Um, yes. And I, I'm just fascinated and so inspired by those stories. A- absolutely. And I'll turn it on the other side. Uh, November 2019, I was in Miami for the Reader's Favorite Book Awards. And lo and behold, in line in front of me was a lady, and I introduced myself. And she said, well, I'm not the author here. And her 13-year-old daughter was an author, and it was her second book, and her second book to receive a book award, and she was 13 years old. And so the the reverse of Mills Wilder is it's never too soon to pursue your dreams either. And so we who are a little older have the opportunity to encourage younger people to pursue whatever dreams they have when they're younger as well. Yeah, absolutely. I um, y- y- And again, you hear those stories as well of, of younger people that you're just, I'm just floored by the, the things <laughs> that they can accomplish and put their minds to. Yes. <laughs> Gives me hope for the future. <laughs> absolutely. And we, we need to encourage that hope as much as possible. <laughs> yes, I agree. Well, thank you so much for taking the time out of your Sunday afternoon to chat with me. I really enjoyed it. And, um, again, the book is called Conquering Life's Course. Um, Thank you so much, Richard. Thank you very much, Sarah. And God bless you and your audience, and God bless America. So thank you once again to Richard for joining me to talk about his new book, Conquering Life's Course, Common Sense in Chaotic Times. I think we can all use some common sense, and um, I think we can probably all agree that 2020 has been nothing if not uh, more than a little chaotic. So hey, a timely, timely book if you are interested in reading some thoughts on how you can utilize some common sense during these chaotic times. And, um, you know, everybody has a different idea of what common sense might look like, but these are pretty, pretty standard sort of tried and true kinds of thoughts and ideas. So definitely check out the book if you um, are looking for something like this in your life, especially now with the craziness. Thank you again to Richard. Thank you as always to you. I so very appreciate you and um, your support of this podcast. As always, if you are a fan of this podcast, and I hope that you are since you are still listening here at the end, um, I hope that you will follow us on social media. First of all, you can find us on um, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram or GSMC Book Review and we uh, a and I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear your thoughts on what you're reading, what you would like to read, what's on your TBR list, what is um you know, who are some of the authors that you've really enjoyed on the podcast and have you read those books and what were your thoughts? Just I I just love to hear from listeners. So Thank you for interacting. Also, if you could take just a minute and give us a quick review, uh, so very helpful, especially those five-star reviews. Uh, Lovely, 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 lovely. But if you want to leave a written review as well, that is just as lovely and just as wonderful, and I would greatly appreciate it. And it helps me to get this podcast out to other book lovers such as yourselves. Thank you for that. And thank you, as always, for being you. Thank you for joining me for this episode. I hope that your um, election day has gone well. If you are a political junkie and you're just loving all the election returns, um, that's great. If you have been, uh, you know, just checking in here and there, just to see where things are, that's cool, too. If you are hiding from the whole thing, maybe, maybe you've been in your pillow fort all day with a good book. Hey, I support that plan as well. We all deal with the election election news differently so whatever your day has involved I hope that it has brought you more joy than stress and I hope you're having a good week I hope that good week continues and I hope that week brings you plenty of opportunities to get yourself lost in a good book thank you so much you've been listening to the golden state media concepts book review podcast 
part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program. Thank you.